Hello everyone, I hope all is well. Welcome back to the Public Health Academy. So today we will be reviewing the solutions from the epidemiology practice questions that were posted on Instagram as well as YouTube. So for the first question, I'll read out loud. Suppose that a cohort study was conducted among women in the United States in order to find we the alcohol consumption increase the risk of developing liver cancer. Investigators selected 600 women who consume alcohol and 700 who did not. The study found that among women who consume alcohol, 200 develop liver cancer. Lastly, 450 develop liver cancer among the non-alcoholic consumption group. Create a contingency table and calculate the following. Relative risk of the exposed, relative risk of the unexposed, and risk ratio and odds ratio. So the first thing that we're going to do is, of course, is set up the contingency table. And as you can see, the contingency table has the exposure status in terms of alcohol consumption and individuals who do not consume alcohol. Then you have the disease status. So you have liver cancer and then no liver cancer. And as you can see, the totals. So over here, I have filled up all the tables with, sorry, I filled out the table with all the different numbers. So as you can see, the total amount of individuals who had liver cancer was 650. And then among them, 200 consume alcohol and 450 did not consume alcohol. Then when we move over to the next column, we see no liver cancer. So we have 650 again, and the numbers have changed. So 400 with no alcohol consumption and 250 with no alcohol consumption. And then we have the total columns, um, totals for all um, based on exposure status. So 600 were um, exposed to alcohol drinking or actually consume alcohol, and then 700 who did not consume alcohol, and then this um, total came to 1,300. So the first question asks you relative risk of the unexposed. I mean, sorry, relative risk of the exposed. So you have the equation for relative risk of the exposed, which is A divided by A plus B, or you can read this as of A divided by individuals who were exposed to alcohol consumption. And then you plug and chug the numbers. So that's 200 divided by 600, and that gives you 0 0.33. Then the next question is relative risk of the unexposed. And this is the equation for relative risk of the unexposed. And as you can see here, you have C, and that's divided by C plus D. C plus D represents the unexposed group. So individuals who did not drink alcohol or did not consume it. Then you plug and chug the numbers from the contingency table. So that's 400 divided by 750, and that gives you 0 0.533. Then the next question is risk ratios. So the equation for risk ratio is the following. Um, you have the relative risk of the exposed group, and then that is divided by the relative risk of the unexposed group. And please do keep in mind that the exposed group is individuals who consume alcohol, and then unexposed is individuals who do not consume alcohol. So as you can see here, this 0 0.33 represents the relative risk of the exposed group, and the C divided by C plus C represents the unexposed group, 0 0.53. So the total risk ratio in this case is 0 0.622. Then, of course, it asks us to calculate the odds ratio, and then this is the equation for the odds ratio. So it's across products of both um, AC of both AC and BD, in which um, this was discussed in a prior mini lecture called odds ratio. If you haven't watched that, I suggest that you would um, click on the Public Health Academy's um, mini lecture video titled odds ratio. So we do a nice plug and chug from the contingency table. So you have 200 times 250. So this represents um, A over C, so individuals who are diseased, and then 400 times 450. And that is just across products from for 400, 450 represents BD. And yes. Okay. And then when we do that, we have 50,000 divided by 180,000, and that gives us 0 0.277. Then the next question we have is 
Which study design is most susceptible to recall bias? That, of course, is case control studies. For case control studies, you are selecting individuals based on disease status, so it'll be very hard for them to remember their exposure status. In a future uh, mini lectures, I would explain to you what a prospective cohort study is in terms of prospective and retrospective. And there's also something called an MB directional course study. Then you have experimental studies. The main one in which I will discuss is the randomized control trial, but there are other ones such as quasi-experimental. And then you, of course you have your lovely cross-sectional studies in which I'll be discussed in future videos. Then the last question here um, is the following. A large group of elderly women was followed for a total of seven, 7,500 person years, and 95 of the women had a heart attack during the duration of the study. Calculate a measure of the incidence of disease and identify what type of measure it is. So of course, um, what should come to mind is that we are calculating incidence. And as, as I discussed in prior uh, mini lectures, incidence is just a measure of new, il new illnesses, and there's two different types. So you have incidence density and cumulative incidence. I'll make sure to create a video on cumulative incidence so you can know the difference between the two. But in this case, we have um, going to calculate, of course, incidence density because of the following. One, they gave us the total person years. So that, of course, is the denominator. And then you have 95, which is the number of women or new cases who actually experience the incidence in terms of their disease status. So in this case, this will be heart attack. So what you do is you divide 95 divided by 7,500, and that gives you 0 0.0126 person years. In other problems, they will actually state, um, should you multiply the person years times 100 by 1,000 um, by 100,000? It's basically on a 10th measure, 10 to the ninth. But in this case, I didn't specify. But if you were to specify um, it in terms of saying they wanted the incidence density multiplied by 100. So what you do here is you just um, make sure this goes to the hundredth power. So that's one, two. So that would be 1.26 person, 1.26 person years per 100, something like that. And then of course, it will actually identify what type of measure that is. And this of course is incidence density. So this of course is the, the um, solutions to the epidemiology questions I've posted on Instagram. I do have one more and which will take much more of a longer time and more calculations and I'll make sure that I'll post that both on IGTV and YouTube. Thank you all for listening and see you all soon. Bye-bye.